Welcome to the Chop Team. I'm your host, Seth the Dark Child. I'm your host, Twins Inc. Our show is about two guys and any friends that happen to come over with a topic that we want to chop up. This is our barbershop style podcast. We discuss it all. If the fellas at the shop will go in on it, we will. Let's chop it up. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we have in our uh, special guest star, Mr. James Wilson Jr., a y- um, young up-and-coming author, wrote this book. Please pay attention. You can get it anywhere. He'll tell you tell you where you can get it in a little bit. Called Teach Me About Garvey. Um, Hold Mr. on. Before you, before you jump in, okay, you, right. know, you, know, you know, people, it's Black History Month, so that's the thing of today. You know, the first couple, you know, the first three weeks went by Black History, and we'll talk about it later, but now a lot of good things going on. So we want to spread some good, positive things going on with the black community and what this young fella here has been doing. I know I've known Jones, James for a while now, so we go back a little bit. But when I saw he had a book, I said, man, I need you to get you on my show. I need you to promote the book. And I'm going to be honest with people, I didn't know much about Marcus Garvey until 2014. And, you know what I'm saying, I'm, I'm late in my 30s when I found out about this. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he wrote a book for kids, you know, I bought me a book. But we're going to dive into it. <laughs> Go ahead, Def. Seth. Oh, well, I mean, just go ahead and turn over, Mr. Wilson. You want to give us a quick overview of this book and the process you went through to write it? Yeah. Well, uh, Teach Me About Garvey was an introduction to the legacy and a few of the more highlightable achievements of Marcus Garvey. But uh, like Dwayne just said, I myself didn't learn about Marcus Garvey <clears throat> until I was at least 25, 26 years old. Mm. You know, and when I learned about him, it was so I kind of had a sense of disbelief because I'm like, you know, how can how can how do you do all of this? And we didn't learn about him in school. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I really thought part of it was like embellished. I'm like, this can't all be true. But then after researching, you know, I was kind of angry and disheartened because it's like. This is somebody that should have been introduced to me at my earliest Stages, you know? I agree. And um, just his vision and the type of concepts that he delivered, it's a necessity for black children. You know, he he delivered what you could call um, a sense of African fundamentalism. And, you know, if we know if we think about the word funda- fundamentalism, these are the bare essentials, you know, mm-hmm. for, you know, for survival. Facts. You know? And so him not being covered with black children instead of me being mad and you know pointing the finger at the white man which he does deserve the finger but (laughs) i put my money where my mouth was and went ahead and created some content to put in front of our children so okay that's what uh i guess that kind of answers some of the questions that's what that's kind of what inspired me to write it that was my initial inspiration but um just the process in itself did you ask me about that? What's the process? Oh, no, go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> He's jumping the gun here, yeah. okay? Yeah. Are we interviewing you or are you interviewing yourself? I'm just saying. Go ahead. Tell nah. us what you want us to know. Well, no, nah, well, really, what I really want everybody to know, paying attention, is why it's important that figures like Garvey, and not just because he's Marcus Garvey, but what Marcus Garvey envisioned for African people around the world mm-hmm. is more important. And it's certain things that we're going to have to normalize for our children, especially going forward with, with the way the world is now. Uh, you know, from production to being able to maintain and run a nation, like these things have to be expounded upon to real consequence to our children. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ask me some questions. I'll, I'll, no, no, you I'll use good. I like that. <laughs> uh, you want to go jump in? Oh, go ahead. You fine. I was just going to ask. Okay. Um, you know, I want to focus on the a uh, qu- few questions about the book and your process of getting it published up mm-hmm. front. So, um, look, mm-hmm. I see the illustrator was Cameron Wilson. Shout that, out Cam. You know, just just to make sure, there's a relation. No, sir. So, Cameron, I actually found on Instagram through a hashtag search. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like I, I went through a lot of different artists and. I saw he did one picture. It was a picture of a lady she had with an afro, and I was like, yeah, that's the look I wanted. And so I reached out to him, and Cameron is amazing as far as he gets right back with you. And 
as far as that, as far as the pro- process of the book, that was actually that's actually one of the longer parts, getting the illustrations done. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad it took as long as it did because Cameron really um, encaptioned what I wanted to get through with the artwork. And you know, I'd say you know he he did a phenomenal job. So. All yeah. right, so the people out there on IG who be sending me all these spam messages about I can customize your face and image, <laughs> it, hey, it pays out. So keep pushing, keep mm-hmm. doing what you do because there's somebody out there, kind of mm-hmm. like James, who needs somebody to write a book or design a book for him. You never know. He might slide back in your DM like, hey, man, <laughs> let's partnership. Thanks. Yeah. And just to add, um, you know, once again, looking through the book, I don't know if you can see these images well on the cameras and we have available, but the illustrations are, are nice. It. The story, the illustrations, I swear to God, I wish I had this as a kid. Something, a book like this instead of those Jack and Jill thingamabobbits <laughs> that I remember. <laughs> you know, and um, it's some powerful imagery. And just when you're saying, how, how much did you work with him to make sure that the imagery fit up to the message you were given? A lot. A lot. That's what I said. And I, and I don't know if Cam's going to see this, but I know I got on Cam nerves, you know. But like I said, Cam... That was an experience in itself because, you know, it might be 2 in the morning and I think of something and I'll text him. Mm. And if he up, you know, he'll text me right back, you know, and we'll just get it together. So we did a lot. And, yeah, I, it was amazing working with Cameron. And uh, he's very talented. He's done a lot of other books too. I met a guy last summer in D.C. Just coincidentally, he had a children's book. And I look at the illustrator and it was Cameron. So, wow. Yeah. So Cam, uh, he's phenomenal. And his work, you can catch some of his work in some of our, some of our black bookstores as well. Do you know his uh, hashtag on top of the head? Yeah. Well, I know his screen name is at Cameron T. Wilson, I believe. But I tag him a lot in my stuff, but I believe it's Cameron T. Wilson, at Cameron T. Wilson. All right. So uh, free plug there, people. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Cam, man. Okay. That's my guy. So, um... <laughs> That was definitely awesome. So, um, in addition to you know doing this bike, bring uh, creating this book here about teaching me about Marcus Garvey, I see you do a lot of traveling, right? And I see you going to a lot of schools, right? Mm-hmm. So, are are you trying to push to get your book inside the school for the young youth to, uh, you know, be something they see all the time? You know, replace. Yeah, that that's a hopeful. I mean, I, I would like for that to happen, but uh-huh. my main drive in going into the school is to be in front of those black children. Right. Because, um, and a lot of the, te- all the teachers say this pretty much. They say, you know, it's so different for them to see a black man in here. Right. With a product, Preach. with a book. And so, and I take that as well, but I just think that they need to hear this type of message come from us, you mm-hmm. know, because after this, you'll start to see more and more books on Garvey, but they'll be diluted. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll be heavily diluted. And the type of man that he was and the type of things that he sought to accomplish and did accomplish uh, happened in a certain context. And so I heard Erica Badu say something to the extent of, you know, we have to make sure that we the storytellers of our history and not somebody else. Mm Because they have a lot of books out now. Uh, My daughter has a few of them. Like, who was Harriet Tubman? Who was Martin Luther King? And they're nice books, you know, good artwork. But is missing that that umph to it. You know what I'm saying? The substance. Yeah, I that mean it's got we, the substance that we but, require. Right. You know, it's 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 then had that stinger in it. You know, okay. it's kinda like defanging the snake, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? And so in this book, when you read it, you know it's a very race first type of book. I, I was telling um okay. I was telling somebody one day like this isn't really like just a book. I look at it more so as a weapon, so to speak, you know. I'm kinda looking to weaponize these young minds of ours. Okay. To, um, you know, accomplish the things that are that are essential. Nice, nice. Which leads me to my next question: um, Getting it edited, I mean, printed and published. How hard was that? Or what? What did you go through to just make this? So, and that's a good question, um, especially for anybody who's aspiring to um, produce a book or, or you know write a book, compose it. So. First is the writing part. The writing didn't take me that long because I'm a natural writer. I've always been a good writer, so the writing didn't take long. Uh, getting it copyrighted is a process, and and it's not it's not too entailed. You go online, you upload your manuscript, answer some questions, pay your fee, of course. Then that takes about 
depending on the length of your book and things of that sort and what material, what sources you cite, that can probably range. But mine didn't take long. So that took about two months. Il- getting it illustrated took about two months. And some of these will happen concurrent. So it's getting copyrighted while I'm being, it's being illustrated. So awesome. that was happening at the same time. Then the printing, I worked with a printing company out of um, – out of Pennsylvania, the printing company was good to work with, but they made a lot of money off of me. And I also had my book translated into Spanish and Portuguese. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Okay. So what I did with my Spanish and Portuguese was I went to the source because basically what the printing company does is they act as a middleman between you and China or you and whatever print company that they really use, which is usually somewhere in China. Gems. Uh-huh. <laughs> so they, uh, <laughs> so the, on my Spanish and Portuguese ones, I went directly to that printing company. And um, it's a lot cheaper, but the process is more entail. So to answer your question, it doesn't. It took about, I wrote it May of 2018, and I had them in my hand in November. I had okay. them in my hand in November. So it was about a six-month process. So I'd say to anybody aspiring to do it, give yourself about that. Now, they do have printing companies here, but it's a whole lot more expensive. So, you know, okay. You, you depend on depend on how much how long you want to wait. You know, check your pockets, <laughs> <laughs> save up, right, right. Well, yeah. I I like how you said that. Um, you know, you're trying to sharpen the minds because if you listen to you know rappers or anybody, they'll tell you if you want to hide something from a person, you put it in a book. So the fact that you in school teaching these kids to read is very, very powerful mm-hmm. because a lot of things that. I say we as blacks fail because we don't do enough reading and we don't do a lot of research. And, th- you know, with you being an author, having a book and telling these young youth kids that, hey, man, it's good to read. It's cool to read. It's, you can learn a lot of things. Mm-hmm. So I think that's, that's very powerful and awesome that, 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 that you're doing that. And I, I commend you to keep doing that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, but, um, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, my bad. I, I was, while you were saying that, um, it was a quote that popped in my head. And as I, Dr. John Henry Clark said this a long time ago, he said the greatest conquest of the European was the African mind. And mm, painful it, truth. it was very profound, but yeah, it's very true. And, you know, going back to like me going to the schools and things like that, I want to reclaim their minds. You know, you know, that's where it starts. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause basically the way our children are educated or have been educated from mm-hmm. since I was a child, probably even my mother up to now, it's been to further the interests of other groups Facts. whose interests come at their direct expense. You know what I'm saying? So Facts. We have to, it's some, like I said, going back to the book, it's some things that we're going to have to make normal to them while they're young. Because, see, you and I talking about, we learn about Marcus Garvey in our 20s and 30s. Right. Mm-hmm. The fight is out of us, you know. For most people, the fight is gone at that oh, yeah, point. Definitely. You know, you trying now. You you got bills. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got yeah. bills. You got kids. You're trying to do X, Y, and Z. It's hard for you to compromise and sacrifice the things that you would in mm-hmm. your younger years. If you would have known, had you known, had you known, you so, yeah. you move differently. Mm-hmm. So, and that's true because we talked about this previously. Like, if I if I won a million dollars or a hundred million dollars, what would I do? Right. Mm-hmm. The first thing I would do, I would invest into the youth because the youth is the generation. Like you said, as an adult, I can't change a bunch of adults' ideas because they got bills, they got responsibility, they got kids. Right. I can help them, but with the youth, I won't go to them and start with them because you look, if you look at the youth, right, as they grow up in these black neighborhoods, mm-hmm. they um, they see these cool guys driving these cars, <laughs> they got the girls, because that's what they see. That's all they're exposed to. I mean, the worst elements available to the black community exactly. and are the heroes. And mind you, and they're not they're not getting enough education in school. You know, they took the trades out of school, so you can't, everybody, I, t- I say this all the time, skills pays the bill. Mm-hmm. Simple as that. Forget the college degree. Skills pays the bills. Mm-hmm. So they take that out of the school. So the kids, the kids are finishing high school, if some do, and they may go to college, they may not. But after that, What's out there for them? Right. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So if you attack the kids young with their mindsets, give them the skills, the knowledge, the program, the school, once they leave high school, they can be successful. Right. So once again, sharpen the minds. And you said something just then. You were talking about how they see these things 
Uh, first, let me say happy birthday to the late, great Dr. Amos Wilson. I saw uh, that. He, birthday. Yeah, that man is probably responsible for a lot of why I did that book. Um, but Who Amos, is that? Hold on. Before you tell uh, about who that is. So, yeah, Dr. Amos Wilson, he was a psychotherapist and a professor. Mm-hmm. Uh, he died. He was born in 1941. He died in 95. But he was what many, I've heard many refer to him as a warrior scholar. And as far as like Marcus Garvey goes, you would call him one of the ultimate Garveyites, like as far as what he committed his life to doing. You know, he really he he wrote he wrote a ton of books and his probably his last one being the uh, blueprint for black power was about a thousand pages. It's like a Bible. You know what I'm saying? But this book, you know, it's a life's work that still didn't even scratch the surface, but it's a life's work talking about the essentials that we'll have to look at doing if we even to survive, you know, in the next <laughs> 50 to a hundred years. So he just, his concepts as well. He, he did a great job at transcending um, Garvey's message, you know, liter, you know, as far mm-hmm. as literary works go and some of his speeches. And I would encourage, I feel like every black educator, even and parent, anybody who deals with black youth, black children, students should be familiar with his works. Uh, you should read the developmental psychology of the black uh, black child and things like that. But yeah, he was he was profound. But he said one time in one of his lectures how we are going to have to be the dictators of our children's taste and desires. And you were talking about earlier about <laughs> you know they see the cars and clothes and you know so they feel these things are important you know it's hard for it's hard for us to expect our children to come home and want to be tomorrow's scientists and mm-hmm. engineers and yeah they don't see it and don't think it's right. cool right yeah if we come home and soon the first thing we turn on is ESPN or housewives or some show mm-hmm. like that how you know how can we expect them to differentiate that that is not being important you know when i exactly. go to a lot of the schools i ask them what do they want to be when they grow up and a lot of them will say your typical things, ball players, some type of uh, rapper, right? You, now it's YouTubers and things like that. And it's, it's nothing wrong with that. I don't discourage them from it, but I also tell them it's, you can do more as well. You can be you can be a ball player and a scientist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could be a chemist and a, a singer. Yeah. You could be an actress and an engineer. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah, and, cause, and I say Cubby mm-hmm. because Cubby was very smart. Right. Cubby sure knew was. multiple languages <laughs> as mm-hmm. a ball player. Right. And before his passing, this man, his business worth was over $2 billion mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before he passed away. Not because, you know, people, some people die, their stock goes up. No, before he passed away, his businesses that he was doing on the side was worth $2 billion. Yeah. So this man was very, you know, he was just, he just wasn't a ball player, like you said. He was also smart. He was educated. Mm-hmm. But go ahead. I ain't want to chunk me out. Nah, quick. you didn't interrupt. That's true. I, that's just a testament to how capable we are as a people. Mm-hmm. You know, like we are very capable people and we've survived atrocities that others met their demise. You know, there are no more. <laughs> you know, I was thinking today, like, you know, Greece and Rome, they gone. You mm-hmm. know? But we still here. It's not under the ideal circumstances, but we are here. And so, you know, going back, what we, like you just said it earlier about investing in the children. You know, Dwayne, once we get 60, 70, God willing, you know, these will be our doctors. Facts. You know, so <laughs> you, you know I want a doctor that looks <laughs> like me and has an uh, – an affinity with my conditions, you know what I'm saying? Who, right, who exactly. looks at my condition better. Hopefully I don't have it, but I'm just saying, you know, I want someone that looks like me. So, you know, again. We but also, hold on. I don't want to just look like me. I want to look like me, but also think like me. Because some you. look like us, but not yeah. part of us. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, All we, skin folk and your kin folk. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's, Primarily, you know, I, right. and I just want to say for the medical portion, the um, psychotherapy, the mental afflictions that a- affect us, yeah. all almost ninety percent of all these um, psycho, I mean, you know, psychiatrists and everything, they they are on us. They don't have our complexion, and they ca- it it's been proven that they cannot relate to our condition. Right, and that's the same for the educators. Our kids aren't being educated the way we want them to be educated, but when you got eighty five percent of all the teachers being of a lighter complexion. 
How are they going to be educated the way we want our kids to be educated? Because they don't understand it. They don't understand the struggles that our kids go through on a daily basis. They don't. And, I, and I, I, I'm sorry. I'm all negative about that. They don't not just don't understand. It's an act of it's an act of effort to not understand. Yeah. I've had these conversations. They it, they're not trying to see our point of view. Just saying. Sorry. Keep yeah. going. No. <laughs> no, nah, you're right, though, bro. Like. These people. You know, one of the first acts of war is a mental thing. Like, they talk about Hitler. You know, one of the first things he did was put out propaganda, you know, Mm -hmm. to kind of diminish that image of the Jew, you know. And so when we think about whites and Asians and so forth, Mm -hmm. these people are fundamental adversaries. It doesn't seem that way because now we live in a time and place where – you know, we do commingle with them. We in their spaces there and ours. But it's kind of like that saying goes, the more things change, the more remains the same. These people are still in a dominant position. And the core mm-hmm. things that they do reinforce that dominant position. Anything that is really about the progression and liberation of African people will topple that. Exactly. So, yeah, it's in, and that's something else, like, and I, I don't go to the schools and tell them that because, no. yeah. you know, their These minds still yeah. <laughs> But, but they will, you, they will need to know that at a certain age. Oh, yeah. If they're mm-hmm. to change things. Cause like you were saying, you know, I don't want them to just look like me. I want them to think like me. And you want them to also think in our interest, you know. Right. Not how do I just treat diabetes or how you know? How can we just clean up the black community? But how can we thrive? How can we eliminate medical conditions? How can we, how can we make this a mm-hmm. powerhouse? How do we make this the center of the economy for this city and so forth? So exactly, yeah, that works. I like that. Mm-hmm. Oh man! All right, um, that was a long. That was a little bit um, sad. We was a little somber. We're gonna we're gonna smile for the next two minutes. So, <laughs> so, Mr. Wilson, after writing this book, how did you feel at the moment you know you had completed this mm. and you and you had a product that you could be proud of? That's yours. That's yours. My grandmama drove it home for me. It was so much I put into it. You know, I was just kind of relieved. Like, whoo, I got it. But she told me she it was I couldn't I was trying to hold back tears when she told me. But she said, you know, you actually have something that you've contributed to your people now. Mm. And that just kind of, you know, Powerful. set it in with my life, man. That's something. So you left a legacy. Yeah. Gotcha. Shout out to my grandma, my mama Ruby. I love you, Mama Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. All that, you know what? We smiling too. Yeah, <laughs> See, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, we trying to be nice and upbeat on this. We got a little real right then. That's yeah. what's up, man. <laughs> but nah, see, um, you know, just just to go back and I first heard of Marcus Garvey back in college. I had to do a term paper on um Lucky you. Malcolm. Yeah, well, but lucky. it was about, about Malcolm X, right? And, uh-huh. of course, you know, his father was a believer and follower of Marcus Garvey. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. So, but, I, of course, I knew about it. Like you say, once you hit a certain age, I am more fired up about black American struggles now in my 40s than I was in my 20s because in my 20s I was just trying to survive. Right. And that's the pro. I find that's the problem with a lot of us is that we don't get a chance to explore our history. Well, first off, let me let me clarify. The Internet changed everything. So right. I didn't know uh, outside of a college library. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know this information. I didn't have it available. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So I go to a college library and all of a sudden, who is all these people being talked about? With my with Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X and his father followed Marcus Garvey mm-hmm. and this Pan African mo- movement and this mm-hmm. that information wasn't even available at that point because I'm older than the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, Very old. You know what? I set myself up for that. <laughs> I set myself up for that. <laughs> but you know, so the fact that at this point for everybody, this information you got right here, mm-hmm. it's readily available, right? Right. So anybody can learn. You can self educate. But we shouldn't have to. We go to school, what, 12 years right. on the government dime? Right. Then if we lucky, we pay to go to years. I'm in school four more years. My piece of paper. And we still are struggling to get access to our history. Right. And that's what you're trying to do right here. Right. So and I, I can't do nothing but salute that. Right. And just 
to speak to that, it made me appreciate our historians so much more. Like you say, you know, we older than the internet, but you know, you go back 50 and 60 years, these historians, you know, they had to do real research that the same research it takes us maybe about five, 15, 20 minutes to do on Google. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep, right. We'll get what they had. It, it may have taken people like Dr. John Henry Clark and talk about Dr. Ben Yosef Yakin and Sheik Antadil, uh all of them, right? Compa- you know, groundbreaking, compelling research. And they went through hell doing that type of research. And it could have cost them their lives. Yeah, like Dr. I was watching something with Dr. Ben was talking about one time he went to Egypt and he had to like sneak with a white group. And then this white group made sure he knew like, you know, when we go to sleep, you can't sleep around us. You know, just all kind of shit, that stuff they had to go through. So, wow, you know, it just made me that much more appreciative. And it made me understand how important this is and the sacrifices that people made. And uh, and I, you know, like you were saying, I hope I ain't getting off topic. But no, you uh, he was talking about uh, you know, Elijah Muhammad, and Malcolm. You know, just just history. Mm-hmm. Like I went to a HBCU, and it's not a knock at my HBCU, but we didn't talk about Garvey. And I wow. took some African at studies an course. HBCU. Yeah. Now I'm not gonna say the whole. I'm not saying the African studies department didn't talk about, it, but I know the classes that I took, we didn't cover him to any real extent he was like a footnote or something right and um and like i said there's no knock to them because if it weren't for that class and what i was exposed to in that class i may not have had the type of interest that i have now so i give them all due praise but at the same time like this is a man whose concepts and ideals you should really have a semester's worth of coursework on him alone if you black you see what i'm saying so yeah he's the things that are left out of our history and left out of our education, it's, a, it's dire for us to uncover it, grab it, and implement it however we see fit. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And that's that's why I push to everybody, you know, do your own research. Mm-hmm. So, or, for example, you know, as we talk about Marcus Garvey, we didn't really go in detail as far as what he did, X, Y, Z. But you know what? We're not. I'm telling you out there to, li- to go ahead and research it and learn yourself. Mm-hmm. Now I'm letting you know the name, and it's very important to our African history. Do the research. When somebody asks you about the unk, I ask them, do the research. Because mm-hmm. once you do the research, you won't see how far that rubber hole is. And, <laughs> and, and as more you keep digging deeper, the more blacker you're going to find. And the more you research, the more appreciative you are of the information. You know, yeah. Because you sacrifice doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because mind you, for 12 years, we go from um, kindergarten to high school and college, we're always being told to learn, told what to learn, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And like you said, we didn't learn till later on about Marcus Garvey. I found out about it when I was in Florida. Um, I was doing this business with a friend of mine, um, and we we went to the black uh, groups, and we had a table we set up. And while I was there, I learned about Marcus Garvey. Mm-hmm. I think I was 28 maybe. I'm like, wow, I'm just now learning about this man. Yeah. And shout out to, like, the Rastafarian community. Oh. Like, they were very big and, you know. Yeah revitalizing the image of Marcus Garvey and bringing them back to the forefront. So, you know. Yeah. And mind you, because, you know, Black History Month, everybody knows about Malcolm X. Everybody knows about Martin Luther King Jr., Harriet Tubbett. But Marcus Garvey, that's not one of the names we know about. And you should know about There's a lot of other names out there you should know about. But you got to do the research. You got to start with him, and then you'll you'll find more names, more people. You start learning about more history. <laughs> right. And like uh, Seth was saying, that how that – Marcus Garvey and um, his dad, you know what I'm saying, influenced Malcolm X, right? Mm-hmm. His, so it's a connection there because, you know. Well, I, I want to say this. I, I hope I ain't jumping the gun. Go ahead. No, no, no. But now, uh, Malcolm's father was a part of the Garvey movement. Elijah Muhammad, who was formerly Elijah Poole, was a part of the Garvey movement. And a lot of people, and i and not taking any shot at the uh, NOI by any means, but a lot of people don't understand that Elijah Muhammad's vision for the Nation of Islam a lot came from being in that Garvey movement. Because if you pay attention mm-hmm. to the Nation of Islam, it's it's real, it's a black faction. It's a black form of Islam, you know. And it's a form of Islam that caters to the black man, which is genius, you know, and very effective. So, yeah, well, Gar- a lot of people came under that Garvey umbrella. Well, I just want to say, just to clarify, not, not just the black man, mm-hmm. the American black man. American black, yes, yes. Because it's a yes. pan, that pan Africanism that right. is part of the NOI mm. is central to our um, struggle specifically. Mm. Mm. And But now that you brought it up, 
What do you feel about that, the Pan-African movement? How do you feel personally about that? Do you have any idea? Yeah, I feel like that is one of the movements since Garvey, or just the idea, the concept of Pan-Africanism. I feel like post-Garvey, that's one notion that we have not really given a lot of effort and energy to. But not just to say that we're not trying, but... Is discouraged, so to speak. I think it's suppressed. It's regularly suppressed in the media. Yes, yes, it definitely is. Because, again, to establish ties with Africans in America, Africans on the continent, and Africans in Brazil, and Africans in Ecuador, Jamaica, IAT, here we are again. We're threatening global dominance at that point. You know what I'm saying? I did a count just, you know, one day just trying to, do something. But I try I started counting. It's over a billion of like it's over a billion and a half African people on the planet. That's second to the Chinese. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Dr. John Henry Clark said one time with a billion people, if you could get a billion people at one at one time to do something at one time, even if it's wrong, it's gonna make an impact. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So we have to we going back again, education. That's nothing I learned in school. They don't tell you it's a billion African people on the planet. They don't tell you that you have family in these different places and that you all have a common ancestry. You know, mm-hmm. when I was little, like I knew Jamaicans were black, like I knew they looked, but I didn't know we shared that common history. Now, we shared a, that place of origin. It's I just, just a boat ride. They yeah. dropped. They, it was a stop on the ride. Again, what he, Doctor John Clown said, he said the the slave ship didn't bring over Jamaicans and African Americans and Haitians. You know, <laughs> brought over Africans and dropped you off here, dropped you off there. You know, and so forth. So, yeah, it's a, it's a lot we have to uncover and learn. Just and one thing, like I hope, not just with my book, but I'm hoping more people will take an interest in you know, doing, creating material and content for our children. Because, you know, I'm one person, but it would be good to see more books on, more children's books on Garvey, more children's books on Pan-Africanism, and even Malcolm. Y'all were talking about how uh, black history, everybody knows Martin and Malcolm. You'd be surprised we know Martin and Malcolm, but these kids, when I go into school, they don't know Malcolm. They don't know Malcolm. Well, you know why? Because Martin, Martin gets his own day. Right. Yeah. Malcolm... Doesn't get a day. Mm-hmm. But also, Malcolm, see, Martin was like nonviolent, nonviolent. Mm-hmm. Mark, Malcolm was like, by any means necessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they don't want to they they give them uh, that much influence to someone who was talking about, you know, no, we, we want it this way. Mm-hmm. You know, our mm-hmm. way or no way. Yeah. And they, they, they want to keep us suppressed. Just right. even right now with the making a man masculinity. That's a whole nother topic. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, we're going to have fun with it. Once yeah. you open that door, Dwayne, I got to come in now. Okay. We're going to no, we gonna talk about it, but not on this one. We won't talk about the next right, episode, man. people, but on the All book. Right. <laughs> well, let, let's set you up for the future. So, reading this book, it, it, it was a great book. You know, the right. information, it was nice, but I easily saw how you can make this into a series. So what's your plans in the future? Yeah, uh, several people are saying, I appreciate you saying that about the book, bro. Uh, yeah, several people have said I should do it into a series. And I, I'm i not against that. I just I just kind of go off of how I feel. And, like, I really feel like I want to cover as much, as many bases as I can with African fundamentalism and really introducing the concept of power to our children. Uh, I do have some names in mind, you know, uh, and like I was telling y'all earlier, I've, I just finished my second book on the red, black, and green flag. I, I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't finalized the title of it, but I think I'm pretty much there. But I'm just kind of going into, again, the red, black, and green flag was the flag that Marcus Garvey introduced uh, in 1913, uh, 1920. I'm sorry, August 13, 1920. He introduced that flag, but. I kind of get into I get into what the colors mean, but I get very deep as far as how it applies, and and I all, I really kind of give an account of what belongs to us, and you know what we're to do. So, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, I have thought about doing a series of it. Uh, and like I said, I have a few names, but I'm gonna definitely have to do some more research and digging on them because I, you know, some of these truths about our leaders. Mm-hmm put us in an uncomfortable space because it requires more of us than just, you know, going to the voting booth and praying, you know. So, yeah. 
I definitely have to do my I got some due diligence to do, but yeah, I, I have thought about that. So yeah, that that could be coming. Okay. Well, I got one more question just to see about your target audience for that next book cuz you mentioned that it was a little bit more in-depth and deeper. Right. So what so who are you trying to reach with that one? So with this the next book, it'll be targeted more towards like your upper level elementary and middle school children, especially with the vocabulary that I use. It'll really kind of be middle school, but it never hurts having a youngster, you know, even though it's before probably about fifth and sixth grade, it doesn't hurt having your four, uh, third and fourth grader read it because all it'll mm-hmm. do is accelerate their reading level exactly. and literary aptitude. So why not? Nice, mm-hmm. nice. So, yeah. Yeah, and that, and even with this book, so you can see this book is, I guess most would call it a picture book, but when you read it, the words are far more advanced, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, like, my son, he's six now. You know, he and I read the book, you know, and this is way above his reading level, but he's going into class with a far vast vocabulary than his classmates. You know what I'm saying? And That's key. And, like, you know, going back again, you know, as far as the rest of the world, how they relate to us, like I said, these are our adversaries, and you better believe the Chinese child is being accelerated oh, yeah. at every level possible. Mm-hmm. So is the, the well-to-do white child, you know. And... Look at the world right now. Who's in power? Facts. Who, who dictates our reality? Who makes your clothes? Who, exactly. Who manufactures your weapons? You know, think about it. <laughs> oh. So oh, I didn't mean to be cynical or nothing. No, no, dude. I know we try to lie. Hey, no, no, no. We can, we can, we, we, <laughs> do you know how hard we working to be good right now? <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 On I'm this show, we, we, it's, it's all, anything flies. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. This was this was nice though. You you good? Yeah, I'm good. So before we close out, you know, um, so James, where can people uh, get to, get this book? Where can they you know get their own copy so they can give to their kids, read them before bedtime? Where? Yeah, um, before I do that, can I, can I get one more shout out? I oh, definitely not. Move. Shout whoever you out, man. Wait, time out, time out. Jane, you have the mic. <laughs> Let's hear it. Shout out to uh, Brother Hassan. He's on Instagram. They they shut down all of his pages because the boy, he goes hard. But uh, Brother Hassan 3, that's his Instagram. But shout out to him. He was one of the first people that he had a big following on Instagram. And he still does. But he, I sent him a copy of my book as soon as I got it. And he was one of the first people to, he, not only did he advertise it, he did a video. Oh, really? Something he didn't have to do. Yeah, he did a video saying how he reads it to his children at night. And that gave me an influx of customers. And, you know, I often attribute my my doing well with the book to him, you know, his initial stamp on it. So I want to definitely shout him out, uh, Brother Hassan. Um and he's also a good he's also a good historian on the Haitian Revolution, the Haitian history. But anyway, my book is available on mrbookshelf.com, M like Mama, R like Ruby, bookshelf.com. Uh that's my site. You can get it from there. I know a lot of people have Amazon gift cards and things like that. It's available on Amazon. Uh just search Teach Me About God. I've got the ebook. The ebook and the physical copy is on Amazon. And you can also buy the physical copy from webuyblack.com. Uh we buy black.com search teach me about garb it'll come up and then uh i have it in several black bookstores throughout the country and i'm hoping to get them in more but like here in atlanta uh we have shrine of the black madonna bookstore um nubian bookstore out in morrow uh the listening tree bookstore it's actually a, a black children's bookstore in decatur georgia right off of candler road um uh, shout out to brother omar he that's his store that's a good it's there and then um the other ones across the country is like Nicholas Brooklyn in Brooklyn, New York, uh, Marcus Bookstore in Oakland, California. Wow. Uh, Akibilon in my hometown, hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. They have my book. And uh, it's some more. I can't remember. I'm, yeah. surprised, I'm surprised you remember all those names. I know, yeah. like, well, and I handle, <laughs> like I handle, so that's one of the, I guess I get the pros and cons of having a publisher. So I uh-huh. self published the book. Mm-hmm. So I handle all business related to so the book. So you did the marketing for it. Marketing, everything, distribution, everything. It has to come if it didn't come through me, it's not legit. Wow. So you know, yeah, all of it comes through me. So I'm trying to land it as many places as I can. And I really like to have them in black bookstores because mm-hmm. 
yeah. you know, in Garvey fashion, you know, think back, buy black, be black, you know. So I definitely kind of want to have them in the black bookstores to kind of make that an incentive for people to go into the black bookstore to get the book. Nice. So. I'll keep it in-house. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, sure. man. We got to make our money, you know, double multiple times, you know. And we got to keep these. So, you know, speaking the history, our black bookstores contain much of the material when it comes to black history and just, you know, anything. So we have to keep our black bookstores opening and functioning. So, you know, to anybody listening, you know, please make sure that you visit these black bookstores before you go to your Barnes and Nobles and places like that. You know, definitely try and get in your black bookstore. Okay. Nice. All nice. right. So also, James, where can people reach out to you if they want to book you? If you want to come to your school, you know, invite you, how can they get in contact with you, James? Yeah, Instagram. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at James Writes 615, J A M E S W R I T E S 615. Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, just search James Writes or uh, James Wilson Writes, but you can do Facebook.com forward slash James Writes 615. And uh, then my website, MRBookshelf.com. And um, you can also. Reach me via email at James W Writes uh, at gmail dot com, and I'm very responsive. Usually, I usually get back in touch with you within a within the hour. So that's true. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right, Anthony, you want to close out with your Seth? Yeah, no, I, you know, and once again, this is off topic, and I should ask this early. Mm-hmm. So, how many? If it's okay to ask, how many how many units have you moved so far? Yeah, so I started off with two thousand units, and I've moved over. I, man, it's crazy. I counted today. I'm at. I've moved about thirteen hundred. Yeah, thirteen hundred so far. So yeah, so I'm looking to. I'll make uh, that thirteen hundred and one because I'm buying one today. There we go, D. That's what I'm talking about, yeah, man. I'm, I'm gonna buy power. that one when you sign it. Black no, power. I'm buying that one. Mine. No, I got, you already. I, I got this one. <laughs> I got I got more. I got more. There you go. But yeah, uh so yeah, I'm hoping to um you know, I'm hoping to cl- get rid of that inventory and you know, place another order here soon and then like I was telling y'all earlier also, I don't know if any, if you have any uh Spanish speaking or Portuguese uh viewers, but to those to those viewers um and listeners, I have the Spanish version. It's available on my website uh, mrbookshelf.com then my English, Spanish and Portuguese versions are all available in ebook format on Amazon and um, being that it is Black History Month is something that I, wa- I wanted to implement earlier but this is definitely this would definitely enhance the month like in Spanish classes you know what I'm saying for them to have the book and you know read along with it because um, you know we have a lot of Spanish speaking black people in mm-hmm. this world you know especially throughout the Caribbean and Central and South America so mm-hmm. yeah and that's, that's really who I was trying to target with that but yeah so yeah I got them in all those different versions so it, even if you're a parent and you have your child that's taking Spanish you know go on and either purchase the book from my site or you can download the ebook from Amazon, but uh, yeah, that's definitely a, a helping tool for anybody who speaks Spanish. Mm. All right, nice. All right, we done. Yeah, I, I guess I mean I appreciate those questions. Man, I asked me some good questions, and uh, I'm trying to rem- just trying to think if I forgot anything. Hey, much you want to shout out? You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out my whole family. My my family, my entire family there we go. has been a big instrument in helping me so shout out to my entire family shout out to every teacher and librarian that has reached out to me and has made a connection with me um it's so many of them but i love all of y'all dearly and you know that's a real investment in the minds of our children anytime that i'm you know invited somewhere or allowed to come speak and read the book uh you know we just gonna have to really now I'm talking to adults now, like we really going to have to make a real investment in our children's minds and their perspective and cultivating their perspective to accomplish the things in this world that will ensure not just our survival, but our livelihood. So, yeah. That was, that was nice. <laughs> All right, people, well, we done for the day. Stay tuned. Cause the next conversation is going to be, Going in. Yeah. Simple as that. Going in. So we are taking the halos off going forward. Yeah. <laughs> Peace.